Nityanam, this is my Nithi Sarva Mangala from um, Bengaluru Adinam. Uh, today I wanted to answer one of the Facebook users uh, questions. He said in his own words, he's struggling for a job. He has an engineering degree and the past five, six years he's been holding children, tuition to children. And um, now he wants to look for a more permanent position, permanent job. But he's uh, he's doing uh, exams, but he's not having any luck. So for him now, that whole process has become a struggle. So this is what I want to tell him. I will avoid his name in interest of privacy. Um, what I wanted to tell him and anybody else who's having or uh, what they feel is they're struggling with anything in their life, their life is not going the way they want in any other, any aspect of it. Could be health, could be uh, financial. Like in this case, it's a job. It could be relationships, um, anything. See, see, we are children of immortality. That is what our Vedas and scriptures tell us. That's what they call us. They don't call us human. They don't call us weak. They don't call us sinner or anything. But they say you are children of immortality. When children of immortality, can they have anything called struggle, fear, any negative emotion? Of course not. So how is it that we are having struggles and we are having fears and we are having bad luck and things not going away and how, how is it that these are happening? Why are we manifesting these situations and life experiences in our, for us? When we are children of immortality, we are powerful enough to manifest and create and attract the things we want in our lives. So why would we want to do something that we find unpleasant um, and unpalatable? So I want to start off with a small example uh, on what that means. So <clears throat> there is something that happens when uh, people, when we all grow up. Every incident and event that happens in our life uh, leaves a mark in ourselves. Some uh, to different levels of depth. Some go deep and some go. Some are lighter and more shallow. So once that go deep, we carry the residue of that experience. That uh, usually it is a negative experience. Uh, some fear, some powerlessness that we found ourselves into and in, and could not did not know how to handle it. We when we carry the we carry a number of these in our lives. These are unconscious, unrecognized events, most of them, and some are unknown event. And for example, if you had an accident when you were a kid, you can still probably recall the pain you went through and the fears, etc. Uh, but a lot of them can be also, um, we may have forgotten incident, but at the level of uh, the deeper mind, we do carry the remnants of that emotions and the fears and the powerlessness and whatnot. So these are constantly eating in our inner space and not allowing us to manifest what we want. So for example, uh, there was a kid about seven years of old age um, and he was, this is a real incident actually, when he was uh, in the beach at, at that age, he saw four men, they were squabbling and it turns it bad and one of them, they all beat up another person who dies and they throw him there and leave. Now, this incident in the mind of a seven-year-old is a horrible incident. First of all, seeing the violence, then the death, then the fears that grip him, thinking maybe they'll come after him next, and he runs away from this place. Now, even at the age of 40, passing by a beach still brings up all those emotions in him. Now, this incident is deep enough and remarkable enough that he remembers the incident. But a lot of times, there are incidents that we do not remember, but brings up the same emotions, which we do not even recognize most often. So it is these incidents that spoil our ability to manifest what we want. So when we remove these, the, rem the residue of these experiences from ourselves, the weight of these events from our body and mind and spirit, we find that we get back more energy. We are able to now uh, realign what we want to manifest and see it happen in our lives. So this this process is called completion, Purnatva. 
So when we become complete within ourselves, we're not carrying any residue of any events, then our ability to manifest becomes more stronger and more clearer. So I'm going to, over the next few videos, take you through the different steps of uh, completion process. So one of the first ones I want to everyone to do who's watching this is to start to listen. Now again here I want to explain what listening is. Um, we all listen to each other, we all talk, we all have what we call default listening, which means we process only part of what is being heard and that too to varying degrees of depth. But when we do something called authentic listening or passive listening, that is we just listen without judging anything, the word or the meaning, we just listen quietly. We don't pass judgments, we don't react, we don't respond. So this is called passive listening. Now, most often if you look in, you will find that you have not even listened to your own self. You might have your inner self wanting to do something, or wanting this, wanting that, wanting to go here, wanting to say something, and sometimes you might be repressing it. And these constant repressions create so much stress in the system. So, to release all that, let first start listening to what is happening inside you. Listen to all the things, the events that it has recorded and is going on inside like a, uh, like a broken gramophone. So if you can start with that first, listening to yourself. Don't criticize, don't justify, don't blame, no judgment whatsoever. Just listen. If it says apple, it's apple. If it's dry, orange, it's wrong. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. It's just that. So just listen. So whatever comes up, let it all come out. Let it all flush out. If you feel like, having, if you have a strong emotion, then let it all out. Release it. Release the load that you have been carrying unnecessarily for so long. And when you do this, you will find such a huge relief. A lot of things that were bothering you earlier will no longer continue to bother you now. So, um, this is one, I won't stop at this step because I want this to be the only takeaway from this video. That we all just sit down and do passive listening. Listen to your what your heart is saying. Just go to your heart area, focus on it and see what is happening there. What are the emotions? Sometimes you may not even know, you may just see an emotion coming out. Let it out. You may not know a reason why you feel that way, but let it out. So get all the slush out of the system. This can have this that is the power of your sincere, deep, intent, authentic listening. Now once you have discovered this, then you can discover the power of this listening when you apply it to others. But first, now turn inwards, spend time with yourself, listen to you. You are the most important person in your life. If you do not listen to you, who else will? So it's time to start at step one. Listen to yourself, start today and continue every day. Take time every day to listen to yourself. Think or listen to all the things that you have suppressed and told your heart to shut up or because it's not convenient, there's no time, blah, blah, whatever. Okay? So on that note, I want to, to uh, if you have any inputs, any questions, any queries, any difficulties, uh, please post a comment, I will gladly answer. Um, and I will also address it in the next uh, video and I will share more uh, content if you want any specific completion way to any specific area in your life so on that note I would like to wrap up this video thank you for listening and see you all tomorrow